Welcome to The Big Break Show, a podcast where we discuss short-term rentals, entrepreneurship, life, mindset, and everything in between. Here are your hosts, Rob Loza and Jesse Vasquez. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 15 of The Big Break Show. I am here with my co-host, Mr. Jesse Vasquez. Jesse, 15, bro. How do you feel about that? Can you believe we're at number 15 already, dude? Like, it's freaking crazy. When did we start this? Like, three months ago? Yeah, I think it's been like three months now, right? Because we're dropping one a week. So this is probably the third month, man. It's been... I'm excited, man. And everybody listening to this, right? We, we're we taking it back to the beginning, right? The music, the us talking. So today is going to be a very um, cool, calm conversation about where we're at in life, what short-term rentals are doing, or what's happening in the short-term rental world. Um and everything else in between there that whatever Jesse wants to talk about, because that's what we're doing today. <laughs> yeah, we're just shooting the SHIT today, I guess, right? Um, yeah, no, I won't, there's a lot of things that are happening in the short-term rental space right now, Rafa, and I'm glad you brought that up, because, you know, um, uh, who's who's the dude that just popped? Who's the guy that's on Bigger Pockets now? Um, Bro Built. Yeah. He's, Rob, he's, Rob Built? Or Rob Bro Built. Or? He just took over Brandon Beardy's spot, and... Um, Rafa and I were talking about this a little bit earlier. So the, I think that with with him going into there in that spot, it's going to, you know, Bigger Pockets is a huge program. It's like literally the biggest real estate mm -hmm. uh, program about out there, not only just on, you know, all the Spotify and Apple Music and all that stuff, but also on the YouTube space. So you imagine now all Roe Builds fans who never listened to Bigger Pockets are now going to go to that avenue because he just put up a YouTube video saying that he's now going to go to that. The dude has millions of followers already. So we're we are somewhat already in a congested space when it comes to short-term rentals right so imagine all these investors that are now looking and they have been already this has been something that's not new we know we've talked about this for a while now what do you think is going to be the implications of you know Robilt coming over to and by the way I, I like his content and stuff like that i'm not hating on him at all actually i i'm, I'm pro Robilt. um rafa do you feel the same way <laughs> uh you know i have i have certain thoughts behind it I, i'm excited for him i i used to watch his stuff way before like way way back in the day and i love his tiny house concepts and everything um i'm excited for him i'm happy i like to see people do good and, and get better at things right um yeah as far as your your question goes with uh the implications of him going on bigger pockets i think it's going to blast the short-term rental world um, he's big in short-term rentals. He does vacation rentals specifically. So he's technically big in vacation rentals, right? That's technically what he's doing. Um, because short-term rentals have 40 different types of customers, right? I focus on the small arbitrage, one bed, one baths, two bed, two baths, et cetera, et cetera. Apartment complexes. He focuses on cabins, tiny houses, all that unique glamping, right? All that stuff. And yep. with him being on the world's biggest real estate podcast, network right um knowledge blog all that website um i think that a lot of people are now going to start listening to short-term rentals and what they do and what the benefits are and where what where where we could go with them what they bring to the table and so with that is going to come a lot of people wanting to jump into the space saturation regulation implementation everything right uh it could be for the better i'm pretty sure it's going to be a little bit for the worse in some places because any person who wants to get into short-term rentals and doesn't do it correctly is is uh really just more of a liability than an actual help towards short-term rentals right i can't i can't count off the top of my head how many people i've been around who have been in buildings doing short-term rental arbitrage who have caused problems and have either gone kicked out gone me kicked out um have pissed off neighbors right i mean cities create regulations based on one bad operator who has a giant you know what is a project X party in a house in a neighborhood? And then they end up causing problems for all the neighbors and then city regulation comes into place. Right. So I hope that with him being on the show, which I, I'm actually looking forward to see how he does and what they talk about, because he's got a really good personality on top of it. Right. Um, he, he's funny, things like that. And so I, I, I hope that with him being on the show, he talks about the actual education of what it takes to really be a short-term rental operator and what it takes to be a good one on top of it so that people who listen to him, take it on can can go man I, I can totally do this yeah yeah i agree do with it you, correctly. you, know you, yeah. you brought something up a second ago and you guys i've actually heard rafa before i was on a call with him one time and some dude came into one of his complexes and completely 
stirred stirred everything up and he actually lost units and you know what he said to me when i when i was like dude aren't you pissed off he's like no do you remember that conversation we had rafa yeah like i i was fucking excuse my language i was more pissed than <laughs> than you were dude <laughs> i was just like what the hell like how did, can this happen like and, and those you're right like those kinds of things are going to happen and, and that's the problem with education when it comes in this space that you have to really know how to operate things the right way because there's other people that are doing things professionally that if you uh, skew those those that that your your market or you're you're turning, you know you're you're not paying attention to systems. You're not having cameras. You're not you know having um, you know noise aware or something in your property. You're just going to cause issues for everybody else. So I think that's for me one of the most important things. And again, going back to you, like losing units, that's essentially losing your livelihood in a lot of ways. Like if you think about it, because that's this is what you do full time. But you didn't even like it wasn't even a thing to you. I don't understand that. Explain that. Explain that to me, man. Well, look, it, it to me, it's, it's just happened so many times, dude, right? I, I kid you not. Everywhere I go, people follow me. It's a kind of like, I guess the way I see it is when somebody copies what you're doing already, it's probably because you're doing it right, right? I, it, and you can, you as the person, it goes back to this whole mindset shift where I could have been really upset. Um, I probably was in the beginning for I a little was upset. bit, right? Yeah. And, and so here's the thing, though. I can either focus on that and say, man, this person, what an a-hole. I can't believe it. I can't believe this happened. Or I can be like, hey, I mean, am I that good that someone's following me into this place to do what I'm already doing? Right. I, it, should I take it as a compliment? Because if someone's following me and doing what I'm doing, I must be doing something correct. I must be doing something right. And so I, I don't know. I, I and, and on top of that. But hang on here. Following you is one thing, but doing things incorrectly is another. If they're following you, they're following the steps that you're doing. They've yeah. created a problem for you, which then so, in turn you losing units. Yeah, you're right. And so I, I think when that happened, I mean, look, it's it's unavoidable, right? It's it, so what I I actually it's why I shifted my entire way of doing things, right? I don't no longer go into the big REITs or the big giant 200 unit complexes for the same reason, right? We talked about that too. Remember, what do I focus on? I talk about this all the time and everybody who knows me knows this already, right? I focus on working with a small investor who owns a small complexes that I can control the entire thing so that nobody follows me into that location. Because if somebody follows you into any location, there's going to be saturation. There's going to be bad operators. There's going to be people causing problems. And it's what happened at that, that point in time, right? He caused problems for the entire building. I happened to be in that building. The, the management liked me, right? The end, I still, I still, I'm still there. Actually, we, we, I was able to, I, the trade off was I closed down three units. I kept two. Right. And he got kicked out of all of them. Um, but I still got to stay there to do what I was doing because I'm still operating the way I've been operating. Um, I could have avoided all that had I been in and done things differently. Right. So now I no longer go into these big REITs. I don't go into the big apartment complexes because I just don't want people following me and causing problems. And yeah, look, it, it just, I don't know, man. I, I just didn't want to focus on the on the bad sides of it because it could have been me. It could have been someone else. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would have been upset, but you know what? So going back to the original conversation, pros that I feel are going to be important is that more people are going to be looking at short-term rentals and there's already a crap load of people are looking at this, right? But um, the cons to this are what we're talking about now is the, um, you know, not doing things the right way. And I hope everybody listening yeah. right now, there's, there's a lot of ways to do things. Um, and that takes me back to, and Rafa, you and I have talked about this before, like you have to be a professional when you're coming into this space now, because it's, it's saturated in a lot of places. Um, and not that saturation is bad because Rafa's in Orange County, which is pretty damn saturated. Um, but it's being able to professionalize what you're doing, which is going to, you know, have you stand apart from, or stick out from all the other, you know, people being around. So, you know, know what, go. Jesse, let me, let me touch on something there just this morning. I, so I just signed another two two uh, duplex a, a lease right now, literally before we came on here, right? We were just talking about that. So yeah, man, I, I'm excited, right? Because now I have more units to add to my, my plate. But <laughs> going back to that point, I was just literally talking to the owner of that place and he goes, hey man, um, there's so many units here now. Like, how do you feel about that? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I, I'm whatever about it. I mean, I'm, I'm just waiting for the regulations to come and for some kind of things to arise, right? And he goes, um, I had somebody call me the other day who was asking for your location and um, you know, he's, he, he's loyal to me kind of, and I'm loyal to him in, in other ways, but he goes, I had somebody, so this is the owner talking. He goes, I had somebody call me the other day for this location, asking if they can take it for a short-term rental. I go, you did. He goes, yeah. Um, and so I, obviously I, I, they knew who you were and I go, they did not surprised. 
Uh, Because, again, they follow me everywhere I go. And it's easy to find where someone's at, right? Anyway, so he goes, yeah. And I told him that you get first right of refusal for all my locations. And long story short, the point I'm getting to here, I was like, hey, man, I appreciate that. But we started talking and we got into the conversation of why he likes to work with me and why he gives me all the units and why he will always come to me first before everybody else. And it goes back to that point that you were saying. It's the professionalism. The way that I operate, the way that I work, the way I hold myself down. And he said something. He goes, you know, when I first met you, I almost turned you down because I wasn't sure about this business model. He goes, but there's two things that made me turn around about you. Number one, I saw how hard you were working that first week that I actually gave you a shot because you remember the story. He was only going to give me one unit for six months to try me out. And a week later, he gave me the entire building. Um yeah. He goes, I really saw how hard you were working and the, the systems you were implementing into the business. And I looked at him and I said, hey, man, I appreciate that because I'm glad people actually see that. And he goes, but that's not it. That was only half of it. The fact that you're professional, you're running a legit business and you're doing this is what really made me go, wow, this guy's really doing something right. And he goes, but the other half is the fact that you were, number one, so respectful towards me, so true about your word, about what you're doing. I go, what does that mean? He goes, I still remember. He goes, you called me one night because you were sitting there working and it was like almost midnight. And you called me and I was like, oh, my God, something's happening. And so it's funny. I didn't even remember this. And he goes, you asked if, if it was OK for you to spend the night in your unit because you were <laughs> working there so late that the next morning you were going to be there while your crew showed up to finish the work. And I go, I did that. And he starts laughing. He goes, you don't remember that? And I go, honestly, dude, I don't. That's funny. And he goes, yeah. He goes, the fact that you call me and you asked me that in order for us to work together, I was like, man, this guy's legit. He knows what's up. And I really actually want to work with him now. And I looked at him and I'm like, wow, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. I, I had no idea that that was something that mattered. And he goes, it doesn't really matter. I just like the fact that the way you hold yourself in such a professional manner makes me want to work with you, which is why I offer you everything now. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm like, OK, you know, uh, going forward, I know that for a fact I'm going to get all this guy's units. Why? Because it's just the way I operate. It meant a lot to me. Right. I bring it up to say I, I've always tell everybody, hey, how do I get approved? When they ask me, I go, look, hold yourself true to what you say. Make sure you yeah. want to house the right customers. Make sure that you're talking to the right people and make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Because they're going to see that. And when they see that, they're going to want to continue to work with you. So to me, it meant a lot. I was like, man, I really appreciate it. And now I'm thinking like, OK, I have a really good relationship with this guy. Right. And it's how I try to hold myself across everywhere based on that professionalism. And it's what's going to set you apart from everybody else. You know so what I mean? For you talking about that right now, like what are two things that you could say? You just gave two things specific to your your personality, right? What are two things that people could do or even three things that people could do right now that as they're getting into the space that are in it to professionalize what they're doing? Like what you would would consider professionalism in this space. And we know like soft skills, like being nice to somebody besides that, like sure. you know, what what would you say would be important? You know, there's two, two things, things here. There, yeah, there's two things here. And you know what, Jesse, before we get into that. You're frozen on my screen. Really? Yeah. So I don't know if this thing's recording frozen or not. Oh, now you're back. Oh, you started. it's mine. Yeah. You know, I turned okay. my screen off. You know why I do that, dude? Because I don't, I, if I have my screen on, I'm looking at myself. What a freaking weirdo, huh? Oh, that's funny. No, it's <laughs> fine. But you were frozen and now you're back. So, okay. Don't turn your screen yeah. off anymore. All right. Anyway, guys. So this is going to be an unedited <laughs> podcast today because we want to drop it for you guys. So you guys are going to see the, hear the yeah. bloopers, but let's go, let's go back to your point here. Um, <laughs> No, it's funny. I, I just people staring know, at like, myself, guys. We're, Sorry, we're regular about that. dudes. Jesse likes to stare at himself when he talks, guys. So <laughs> not, now that's out in the public, Jesse, because this ain't going to be Sorry. edited, my friends. No, but listen, there's two there's two points here. You hold yourself as a professional in your business, and then you're going to hold yourself as a professional in short term rentals. Okay, there's two different points. I'm bringing it up because it's, it, you got to people got to understand this, right? Right. When you hold yourself as a professional with a certain manner of the way you hold yourself accountable for your business and the way you run your business is number one, going to set you apart in the relationships that you're building. Okay. What do I mean by that? He knows I'm running a legit business, right? I'm running a legitimate from the ground up business that's being ran by me. I'm not just a salesperson who came in to pitch him an idea and then came in and just implemented whatever and never talked to him again. That's right. the first thing, right? That's the first thing. Power Number relationships. Two, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Number two, as a professional business operator, someone who's like a CEO of a company, you have to hold yourself accountable for the promises that you made, right? Number two, uh, you pay your bills on time, right? I know a lot of operators who are always behind on their bills because of cash flow problems or because they, they're not managing things correctly, things like that, right? 
hold yourself accountable for the promise that you're going to say, number one, pay your bills on time with whoever you're doing a, a business with, right? Number three, going back to the hold yourself accountable part, he knows that no matter what happens in the business, if he has a problem, I'm the person he goes to and I'm always there to handle the situation, right? The relationship that you build is huge in terms of doing the business side of things, right? On the right. other, and there's a lot more, we can go on forever on this, right? Those are the three ones that I look at. Number, the second part is the short-term rental side of things. How do you hold yourself as a professional short-term rental operator? Well, someone who runs it as a professional business. That's the biggest one, right? So you mean like putting an LLC or what do you mean by that? No, yeah. So not, running a professional business doesn't mean you're putting it in an LLC. Anybody can run a business in their personal name. The LLC is for right. asset protection, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like there's a lot of different things, benefits behind it. Write-offs, right. tax write-offs, all that stuff. Asset protection, everything. And you're running a legit business. But what I mean by a professional business is the way you're holding that business accountable for everything you're doing, right? Um a professional operator versus a non-professional operator is going to treat that unit as a business asset over something that they're doing as a side gig on the side on the weekend for extra cash, right? You're going to implement systems to make sure that that business is doing its best at all times, whether it's a good security system, whether it's you're implementing a system for how to end parties immediately, whether it's a good system on how to keep noise down, as opposed to someone who just, here's the big one, a professional system on how to vet your guests and the type of person that goes through the door. As opposed to someone who's not doing a professional short-term rental business, just puts it on Airbnb and lets anybody who wants to pay just go through the door because they need to fill bookings. Just to make money. There's a difference. There's no screening versus screening. That's one, right? Security systems versus no security systems. The type of guest versus who cares, let's just let anybody in. The way your unit is set up versus a couple couches in a wall and a, a piece of art on the wall. Yeah. That's the difference in professionalism be between a pro operator who knows how to handle situations versus someone who's just doing this to just make a quick buck. That also goes back to Rafa to hospitality. Like at the end of the day, yes. that's what we're in. Like we're absolutely. here to serve people, our guests coming in. And you're absolutely right. Like I would rather have a vacant night with somebody that I know that potentially will be a bad guest than have somebody that's going to be a bad guest in their property. And I'm sure oh, you're you the exact same one. You brought up a good point, man. Let me talk about that for a second. So this past weekend, I went on Tony Robinson's ride along, right? The yeah. the bus ride along. Um, yeah. And just How was shout that? out. Man, shout out to him. It was an awesome time. Great experience. Really fun to do. Um, you know, I know the people that went got great value because it was awesome. He 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 went to four different uh, houses in Joshua Tree and he we talked to his cleaners and stuff like that. To me, it was something I kind of already knew, but it was good to see someone else. It was refreshing to see another operator, how they run their business, right? Professional. Um, yeah, professionally. Legit, 100% professional business, right? The way they manage their cleaners to the way they do their design, all of that. But anyway, going back to the point that I'm making here is he on the bus there, he said something and when he said it, it caught my attention and it's what you just said right now. He's like, Hey, you know, I don't care what price goes down as long as my place is hundred percent occupied. Right. The closer it comes to the day of, I'll drop the price as low. He's like, I think he said as low as 65 bucks, even if I, if it's 65 bucks, so I can get my place filled. And I'm thinking, why? It's just going to attract the wrong customer. And then as he was talking, he goes, I know a lot of other operators who won't go below a certain number because they don't want to attract a certain guest. And I'm like, that's me. I'm one of those. Yeah. And you just too. said you're one of those. And as he was talking, it came into mind. And I'm like, ah, as he continued the conversation, there's two things to look at here. He's doing tiny houses in the middle of a desert. Right. Literally acreage around him. Right. The, we went to one of those tiny houses and the, it was probably like, I don't know. 40 yards on each side with nobody around him, right? So I'm thinking, here's the difference. The t we're both in short-term rentals, but we're both doing two completely different business models. For me, the reason why I cannot go below 110 bucks per night is because I'm running a one-bedroom apartment and a building with 10 other one-bedroom apartments. If I go below 110, it's going to attract the wrong customer, which is going to cause maybe parties, loud noise smoking in the unit right the bad guests we all have them right let's let's not so hang on this. so the lower the price the the worse the guest yes for me most of the time most of the time and so here's the thing though that's what i'm saying let's not sugarcoat it it's part of being in hospitality i hate saying it right because it sounds like we're being judgmental but it's not when you lower your price it attracts customers who are the cheaper end customers who don't care about your place maybe they're just cruising through it could be somebody who just has a couple bucks who needs a place to stay and they're not going to respect your rules Right. It, it just it happens. It yeah. happens in a lot of ur uh, urban cities. Right. Yeah. But here's the difference. When he lowers the price, he's still in Joshua Tree. 
right, in the desert, a vacation rental offering experience. The person who he gets is still the person who's going to experience Joshua Tree in the desert. They're just getting a really good deal. For me, right. I'm in the city. Whoever books is probably just somebody in the city who's just kind of cruising through, right? The, uh, what is it? The, the, what's the word that they use? Like somebody who's just kind of cruising through the city or whatever. There's a word. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to track the customer in my one bedroom apartment in the city of a hundred other apartments. Yeah, this floater or whoever it is, right? This like, <laughs> Just this person who's cru cruising through who just needs a place to stay for the night. And yeah. it's going to cause problems because yeah. I'm not targeting an experience. So when he said that, I was like, ah, OK, makes sense. I If I was in his shoes, absolutely. I would lower my prices to as low as possible to get a booking, because even if he does have a party, he's in the desert. He's not going to bother anybody. Right. Yeah. Um, he's also attracting a very specific customer to his place. He's not going to get the homeless dude or, or like the 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 person who's just traveling through the city to a quick place to stay who wants to trash someone or like the local who got kicked out of their house right or like a 19 year old wants to party exactly bros. exactly yeah. and in the city for example if i go out drinking and i want to stay somewhere really quick and i want to take the party up at 2 a.m i'm going to book something really quick in that city and if i find something for that i want it as cheap as possible right right because i'm just going to spend the night and roll out right but out in joshua tree so i'm like again going back to the point it always goes down to the type of customer and the type of business you're running. We're both running two very professional type of companies within shorts and rentals, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. He's got a very different threshold than I got. If I book somebody at a really low rate and it causes problems, I got to shut it down immediately. So I'd rather get it unbooked than have to deal with that whole problem and ruin my relationship in the building. than if he was in the desert for one, there's no relationship to ruin around. Does that make right. sense? Yeah, no, you're right. And I think that, you know, I actually run a different model. I want to be the last guy that gets booked at a higher price point than yeah. the first guy that gets booked at a lower price point. Yeah. So um, instead of lowering my prices when I'm not booked, I actually raise my prices um, when I'm not booked. And I have it set up like that and use wheelhouse. Um, and like for me, man, like I, you know, I, 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 there's a certain number that I don't like to go under. And sometimes I'll just test the waters to see if it works. And every time that I've dropped the numbers to a certain level, I've got a, a bad guess. Even if we re reviewed them, even if they had a 4.5 star where I'm like, oh, okay, cool. It's okay. Every single time that's happened. Um, but for me, I don't want to be booked at hundred percent. You and I've talked about this before. I don't want to have hundred percent bookings. I like my places to breathe. I like there to be, you know, if there's any maintenance issues that we need to have. We'll take care of during those slower periods. Like those are things that I actually like. So I, I don't want to have my places booked at hundred percent. Do I want to make money off it? Yeah, of course I do. If I break even, which, you know, thankfully I haven't in any of my units yet where I actually broke even, I made money off of most of them. Um, actually all of them, um, thankfully. Uh, but that goes back to being professional in what we do, right? We, we're pricing according. We're, we're making sure that we're covering all the, the, the standpoints as far as, you know, security, vetting guests through communication. If they have zero reviews, which right now there's a lot of people getting onto Airbnb that never got onto Airbnb, especially in the pandemic, they had no reviews. And we had to kind of bite the bullet yeah. on that because that was that shift in the movement where people were getting away from hotels and staying in Airbnbs, which is great for Airbnb. And we, Maybe we'll talk about their quarter that they had last year that just came out on the IPO or that their stock exchange shows. But a lot of new people are getting into Airbnb that never been into it. And as guests, not necessarily just as an investors, because we know that's happening now. Right. But guests. So you have to kind of bite the bullet with certain things like that. But you can you can see you could basically tell if a guest can be good or bad just by the first. I'm going to say initial five. conversation. Exactly. I can tell. In right. Like, dude, it's funny, Jesse, not to cut you off, man. But the first message I get from them, I already know. Yeah. Immediately. I'm like, okay, yeah. I got to take this conversation a certain way to really test them out. Tell me how you know that. And I'm going to tell you how I know that from my end. Tell me what, what, what is one thing that you're going to get from that? Um, Hey, we're looking for a quick place to stay for the night. Thanks. Or, Hey, love your place. Thanks. Hey, I'd love to book this. Thanks. And then I check and they're local. <laughs> I'm like, I know where this is going. Can hey, I tell we're you just passing through. <laughs> we're just wanting but a party for the night. Okay, here's here's what I do. Anytime anybody books my house, it automatically will say there's like three questions that come in. It'll be like, thank you for booking. We appreciate your stay. Um, number two is like, what is your, you know, uh, you know, we run a small business. We want to know exactly what you, we have going on in our market. Can you tell us a little bit about your stay? And if they answer nothing and they just say exactly what you just said right now. Yeah. Great place. Looks awesome. Uh, that's how I know they're up to something because they're yeah. not like answering the questions. They're not following through on oh. what they're going to say. They're not being true. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they're not saying like, hey, I'm with my son or I'm with my daughter. And the people that are booking your place legitimately, they will answer those questions. They'll literally go through every single one of them and answer them correctly. 
You know? So you you said something because what you said like the initial conversation. I'm talking like the very first message I get from them. No, yeah, 100. percent What you just said. I asked them, hey, can I ask the reason why you're visiting, right? Or what's the reason for your stay? And if they say business, and I, like I'm like, what's business? <laughs> You're here for one night. What's business? Mm -hmm. Right. Or if they say, hey, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here with my daughter. We're, we got delayed. Our airport, our, our flight got delayed for till tomorrow morning. We need a quick place to stay. Oh, cool. 100 percent. Come through. Right. Or if they just don't respond. Red flag. Why aren't you responding? Yeah. Hello. What's going on here? And then I know that I'm going to probably see six, seven people walk through the door at 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? People are getting creative, man. I've actually had people book my property that use their parents' uh, Airbnb account. Mm -hmm. And the only two times I've ever had parties in the last five years, each one of those people had their parents' Airbnb accounts. They had positive reviews all the way oh, across. Oh, that reminds me. I got to tell you a story. So Here. check this out. And it's exactly what you're just saying, right? One of the new units that we just set up, uh, this was about three weeks ago, the very first one out of that 16 units we just set up, right? Um somebody booked and it was the very first booking and i have my brother managing that unit um and he goes hey i just got this booking i'm like hell yeah congrats he goes it's for six days i'm like sweet and he goes oh but he he put the 20 percent discount right and i don't put it right when you're a new host you get the chance yeah. to put the 20 percent discount i don't put it and yeah. I, I i always tell him don't do that dude but he did it and uh, i go whatever right um i told him take it out for the next one but i already knew because the price was around i think like 108 a night and immediately I said, what's the price? He goes, 108 or something. I go, oh, you're going to have trouble, dude. He goes, well, you think so? I go, I know so. Kid you not, listen <laughs> to this. The lady that booked was the mom of the son, right? And so we messaged her and she's like, yeah, I'll be there this afternoon. Thanks. And we're like, oh, cool. What's the what's the purpose of your stay? Oh, just me and my son. We're, we just need a place to stay for the next couple of days at 108. I'm like, Ruben, this is going to be a bad one. And he goes, I don't think so. He shows up <laughs> to the building to drop something off. And there's this dude with like four bags of luggage sitting outside the gate strung out and he goes hey dude there's a homeless guy here i go what do you mean he goes yeah he's just just sitting here i go how does he look he goes well there's a bunch of luggage i go that's not a homeless guy dude i go that's your guest <laughs> and you know how i know it's because he was the only unit operating at that time and he and i go that's your guest he goes you think so i go i know so i go go ask him where he's going he, sure enough he goes and asks his mom booked him the apartment and he was there to check in two and a half hours early and I go, I told you. So he calls the mom. I go, hey, dude, get in front of it right now because this is going to be a problem for the next six days. I bet you she's not even checking in. He calls the mom and the mom goes, I'm not the one checking in. It's my son. He's there. You need to let him in. I'm like, what did I say? Literally, what did I say? And he goes, wow. All right, let me, I, what, how do I handle this? And I'm like, you have two choices here. You can hold the reservation true, let him stay, but he's, she's not the one staying. So if anything happens in the unit, you're, you're not going to get covered by the Airbnb protection plan. The right. good thing is that if they leave you a bad review, you can get it removed. But this guy, he's not going to care about leaving you a review. Odds are he just wants to do what he's doing, which is probably drugs in the apartment. Now, again, that sounds judgmental, but let me tell you, he was strung out. Like, he was gone, right? Slurring, like, just get, oh, blood, like, just looking into the sky. And so <laughs> I, I was like, or two, call the mom and see if she's coming in and tell her that that he can't check in until she, she comes in. And if she's checking in, who cares? Then let him do their thing. Right. He calls her. And he calls her and she's like, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not the one going. I'm out of state. It's my son. And the son had just told him that she was on her way. So now we're like, hey, they're lying. Like, she's not checking in. So I was like, hey, dude, honestly, me, if you ask him what I would do, cancel I would it. call him canceled. Yeah. I go. And not only that, because she broke the rules, you get to keep 50 percent of the cancellation now. Right. Yeah. And so what do you do? Yeah. He called Airbnb and they're like, oh, well, we got to cancel it. But you're going to get it, give them all their money back and go. No, he broke the house rules. And so he had to fight it. Um, she canceled out of anger which was great because it saved us a headache on the Airbnb side, but she ended up canceling right. out of anger, um, said, I want all my money back. I'm done. He's going somewhere else. You lost the reservation. I'm thinking, I didn't lose anything. As a matter of fact, all, I, all you did was save me a headache. And right. so she canceled out of spite. We ended up keeping 50%. The guy packed, this, took his stuff and left, and he got it mm -hmm. booked immediately 10 minutes later without the 20% at a higher rate, and they were there, I think, for like six days or something also, which is awesome. Right. But it goes back to your point here where yeah. the family rented it for the for the, the mom rented it for the son. And it was just gonna be a headache price yeah. point, the type of guests you're getting and third party bookings. Always trouble. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's and it's it's the reality of short term rentals. I mean, that's just what it is. You know, we're taking the risk of not being able to have, you know, a 30 night stay where that's what you do as a short term rental operator. You are taking a risk, not getting a long term renter. 
But when you're doing that, you got to have your price point set up the right way. You got to make sure that you're running your business legitimately. We we're talking about earlier, but these things are going to happen. This is part of short term. Mm -hmm. And people that get into it have to know that this is part of it. Like it's, you're going to have, um, you're going to have the people that are strung out. You're going to have, you know, wives that are in situations that they don't want to be in. They end up in your property, um, you know, that leave or people that leave. Like you're just, you're going to see things that you probably never would you have thought what you would have seen, especially if you're in like a, you know, metropolitan area like yourself, Rafa, I mean, those things are going to happen. Um, so you have to keep, you know, your mindset open when you're getting into this, that you're going to, you're going to fall in these situations where, yeah, you know, you're not going to know how to handle them. And that's where you obviously hear listening to us, giving you insight on these things. There's other people that are giving insight, um, but it's just part of how this works and learning how to mitigate those issues is the most important part. And especially it goes I was going to say, just especially in the vernacular of that somebody's not answering the questions, like that's literally mm -hmm. how you learn how to do that. And it, what, it, you, it happens by learning by like you have to learn, Rafa. Yeah. By hosting one of those people. Yes. That's what that's exactly the point I was going to bring up. Right. Everybody listening to us. We're talking about being a professional and not professional. Look, you can't become a professional operator until you get in the in the in the ring and start operating. Right. You don't become a professional wrestler until you've gone through about 100 matches. Right. But you educate unless yourself from the uh, beginning, Mr. Hulk Hogan or, or The Rock. Or but, the Rock. you know, <laughs> uh, uh, but like, here's the thing. Right. Um, I don't want anybody listening to going, well, you guys sound stupid because we can't do this until we learn. Look, getting started is one of the biggest thing you'll learn as you go. But educating right. yourself beforehand. So know how to handle these situations by being around the right people. Right. Going to network meetups, listening to podcasts. I'm talking to other operators. You're going to learn how to handle those situations. I just saved this. This dude. A six day headache. I kid you not. I, I had to actually kick someone out one time. I was strung out in the bathtub, passed out. And it was the worst. And I had no idea how to handle it. Right. When I first started. Yeah. And I'm like, now I handle it professionally. And I, I stopped and I talk about this all the time. Right. How do you handle a situation? Well, you stop, you take a deep breath. You assess the situation and you troubleshoot it step by step. Right. A professional operator is going to know how to do that. Stop. Take a breath. Assess the situation troubleshoot it step by step someone who's not professional who's doing this just gonna be like oh my god no and go out and maybe fight with the guy or start an argument or just call her being be angrily right i've done it i've been in between both both i've been on both sides of the of the of the spectrum there but becoming a professional operator comes with experience of actually operating comes with learning from others comes by failing and learning how to fix those mistakes right that's yep. going back to that professional part of things um yeah. jesse let, let, let me let, let's let's shift a second here talking about learning and meetups let's talk about our meetup this weekend in case people get to listen to this before uh saturday yeah man i'm excited about this so i'm gonna be it's gonna be my first time down in la well not my first time in la but my first time actually having a meetup with you man um, i know i'm which, super excited man i'm so happy that you're coming down for real we've met before um so yeah it's gonna be on saturday i believe from 1 p.m to 3 p.m over at in Santa Ana, Rafa, give the details on this. The deets. Yeah, so guys, if you listen to this before March 12th, right, come to our meetup. It's going to be a blast. We have uh, about 100 people confirmed already. Uh, we max at 183, but we're talking short term rentals for what, three hours? One, two, three two hours. Three, two hours. Two hours. Um, and, you know, we're going to have some good food because it's a food court and have a couple beers because there's a bar there. So I'm there uh, for the beers. Yeah. Jesse, you're buying the first round, by the way. Just <laughs> I got out. you, bro. But I got uh, you. no, but yeah, man, I'm excited for it. And it goes back to this, right? I'm really excited for the hundred people who already who already RSVP'd. And because, it's free. And it's free, 100 percent free. Yeah. The value that I'm going to provide to these people, I hope, I hope, is immense, right? Because I'm there to answer any questions for the time period that I'm going to be speaking. Because I know you're going to be speaking. And then right. we have good buddy Alex who's going to be speaking. Um, right. And we're all talking about a different topic within short-term rentals, right? I'm talking about rental arbitrage. You're going to be talking about medical professionals and midterm mm -hmm. stays. And he's going to be talking about vacation rental markets in short, all of them short-term rentals, right. aside from the midterm rental market. But same thing, same concept. Right. Um, and so all this knowledge is going to be there for free. Yeah, I know. It's right? Crazy. Imagine I just talk about this one one issue on how to handle it and someone who's just starting listens to it and then they eventually run into this problem they already know how to handle it because they heard it at a networking event or exactly people. and not only that but one thing like you know now that we're kind of coming out of this pre-covid thing and networking is you know happening more often you know there there's a huge power behind networking like i've met people at meetups that have ended up being you know partners that i'm working with on certain things or finding a deal somewhere and 
you know, I think with um, with real estate and I've, I've said this before, maybe not on this, but on our on on Clubhouse, you know, the power of networking with real estate is one of the most important pieces of the entire puzzle. Like the yep. amount of people that you talk to can somehow eventually come full circle and help you with a deal somehow can connect you with an apartment complex in one place or say you don't have enough money to do something. You meet somebody that has a similar mindset that you do. And that's the entire goal behind all this stuff is we want to make sure that we're connecting with people that are into the same things, that are doing the same things, or that are doing things better than we are. We're educating ourselves and surrounding by those people. I mean, we've all heard your network is your network, right? And your net worth, right? We've all heard that before. And that's relatively really true in the real estate, especially how communicative it is and how important it is to communicate with other people that are in the same space. So, I mean, you guys get to I mean, some networking meetings like really networking is so important dude it's not even funny right i'll just use myself as an example because i can obviously got to talk about i can only talk about my experiences but had i not networked with people just to give you an example even though we did the clubhouse networking it was networking i met you right right, right? we talked we ended right. up exchanging actual information we became friends we have a right. podcast together we're doing a meetup to meet other investors who knows what's right. going to come from this meetup? Maybe somebody important is going to be there and they listen to us as the experts talking and they're going to want to work with us, right? right? Who knows if there's another operator who's just there to listen, another short-term rental person meets the right person, right? I'll give you another example. Networking, right? Even though it's on Clubhouse, it's still networking. It just wasn't face-to-face because -face of COVID. Right. I met Tony Robinson, right? Right. From, from Bigger Pockets, the Rookie Podcast. Mm -hmm. we, we chatted. We exchanged information. We had a phone call. I ended up on the podcast, Yep. Right. Bigger I now met him podcast. in person. Yeah. The bigger pockets podcast. I then met now fast forward. I met him in person. I went to his ride along. Right. To talk about short term rentals. Yep. And it all started with one simple conversation at a networking event. So what and this is this I've, I've heard this before. What if you're a shy person that sits in the corner and just listens and doesn't say anything? What value am I going to be able to get out of that? Or what would you say to somebody that's that way? Because it's just maybe an introvert and doesn't sure. like to have conversations or sometimes because that was me, dude, like. Yeah, I was in a job where I had to talk to people, but I'm really I'm an extrovert introvert by nature. Like, I really don't want to talk to people and I sometimes feel afraid. But you have to get out of that mindset like you really do, especially well, in this in this atmosphere. So what would you yeah. say to people like that? Because I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm that guy. Let me tell you something, right? The smartest people out there are the best listeners. And if you go to a networking event and all you do is listen. You're already ahead of the game by everybody else who's there talking who doesn't want to listen to anybody else right i tend to ramble sometimes so i talk Ten. more than i really should Ten, well i do all the time <laughs> no i really do it's funny me and rough are always like rough will always tell me like man you were rambling in that and i'm always like man you went on a little bit too long there buddy <laughs> we're both always like yo stop rambling hey you stop rambling bro you went on for 10 minutes longer than me it's like no uh, dude you were rambling longer yeah, no but funny. you know yeah listen just go and sit in the corner if you want to. I don't care. Somebody's going to go up to you and introduce themselves anyway and shake a hand and just say, hey, thanks. And then sit down and listen. Or fist bump if you don't want to shake hands. Or fist bump if you don't want to shake hands. I mean, I think we're kind of over the whole COVID thing. People are now shaking hands left and right. I, I saw a guy the other day walk in the restroom, use the restroom and walk right out. And I'm like, bro, you're at a restaurant. You're disgusting. There's still COVID. Wash your hands. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, yeah. I was like, to. gross. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, it's like people gross. just tend to, it's like people forgot. Like, you just forget that we just went through a pandemic, bro. <laughs> You're in a restaurant. You should have brought some. You should have brought uh, some hand sanitizer to his table, bro, and be like, "Here I you swear go, sir." I, I walked out of there. I'm like, "Where did this guy walk?" Because I'm not touching anything <laughs> in that vicinity. Anyway, so go to it, listen, and just learn. You don't have to talk, you know. Yeah. But fist bump a couple people. Say, "Hey, you, you know, I'm John. I'm Sally. I operate 15 units." Right. And smile. What do you do? Yeah. And smile. Right. And that's it. Who knows where that'll yeah. take you? Maybe you'll get well, another guy that rambles on the other side who wants to work with you. Dude, you have to get uncomfortable doing these things like, yeah. with anything like yeah. social part of real estate is so important. You have to get uncomfortable in, in these situations. So I'm well, I'm I'm the ex introvert that was scared to go talk to people. But once you're you start not an doing introvert it, liar, you talk like crazy. I am now because I have to be. It's like my job. But in real <laughs> life, like, I'm, dude, I'm the guy that if my neighbors are outside, like all freaking go like this and walk by. Like, I don't want to communicate. Like, I just want to be like, that's me, dude. <laughs> I'm telling you guys right now, like, I that's don't. Talk to people, but I have like, I realize how important it is. So it's hard for me to actually do that kind of stuff. So when you see me talking and doing these things, like, it's not easy for me. I'm not like, a, I'm just not that type of person, but I have to be 
and you have to be uncomfortable in the sense to like grow in this atmosphere. And the I'm most you guys, successful people, Jesse, the most successful people in entrepreneurship are the people who get comfortable getting uncomfortable. Yes. If you're uncomfortable, you all look, I hate talking to people. I hate making phone calls. Not just me. I'm using this as an example. I do make, I, I hate making phone calls. Um, I hate having the uncomfortable conversations, but as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a manager, as a manager in my company, as an investor, I have to have uncomfortable conversations all the time. I just had one with the owner who was trying to lease me these two, uh, this duplex and he was overcharging. And I have to have this uncomfortable, hey, we need to negotiate this down, right? Don't take advantage situation. I have uncomfortable right. situations when my cleaners mess up, when I have to fire a cleaner. Getting uncomfortable out of your comfort zone, every time you do that, you're growing as a person. Right. If you're that introvert who goes to the meetup and just sits in the corner and you just introduce yourself to one person. Hey, I'm Jesse. I run short term rentals. It's a pleasure meeting you. And you just stay quiet. You already made it that much easier. Now you go up to someone else. Hey, I'm Jesse. Yeah. I run 15 units. And they, when I first started speaking on Clubhouse, I was like, uh, hey, guys, my <laughs> name's Rafa. I do. And I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? I'm Rafa. <laughs> I have a bunch of short term rentals. Uh, this is what I do. Right. But I, I got comfortable. After I was really, 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 really uncomfortable. Right. And in right. order to grow and become better and become a better business owner, entrepreneur, a better friend a, a, everything, you got to get uncomfortable. Yep. And you're or, yeah. or you're not going to grow. You're going to be stuck in your little in your little circle. Right. Your little cave. You're never going to get out of things. The most successful people out there are the people who get uncomfortable in any aspect in life. Yeah. Well, I think, too, like a lot of people that are uncomfortable, it goes back to it. Not necessarily might just be a personality type. It might feel like I don't bring any value to this conversation. Like, why am I going to have these conversations? Yeah. And you. And that's that's true in a lot of sense that was true for me like i'll tell you that for my my own personal stuff like i, still I didn't feel think that I was, way yeah like you're not bringing value to somebody or you're not being able to do something for somebody or why are they going to want to listen to me speak and i think as you start talking about things and you start you're giving yourself little high fives every time you do that like you're you start to gain confidence and momentum in what you're talking about and just like what you're saying getting on clubhouse for the first time and wetting your pants like <laughs> you now have confidence dude like to talk yeah. to people and do things but all it does is takes those little tiny movements every single day of dialing the dial one little tiny centimeter that you you're you're um, acknowledging your small accomplishment and you're you were scared to do it and you're doing it. Those little things are bringing value to yourself. Which at the end of the day, is the most important person that you need to be bringing value to is yourself. And then eventually, you'll bring that to other people as you start to feel it for yourself, man. I, I know that sounds like super cliche, but it's really true. But it's that so. simple. It really is. It's true and simple, right? Getting out of your comfort zone. The reason why people are so shy is because they've been in a very shy environment their entire life. So when you're asked to step out of that circle, right? Bro, what are you drinking right now? You, I just saw you drinking water. Now you're drinking a soda. You just like no, rotate. This is a LaCroix. I have a... You have yeah, like I five things my... in front of you. Have coffee, water, tea. I feel like drinking soda right now and then water and then tea. That's funny. Anyways, getting sidetracked. Wish so, I had a beer. Uh, don't worry, bro. You're coming down in what, one day? <laughs> I got you. Yeah, I'll be there. We got, I got be a lot there, of good bro. breweries lined up for us. I'm ready um, for it. So, you know, getting out of that comfort zone of being shy all the time. Getting rid of that, getting out of that circle of friends who all they want to do is stay at home and play video games all day long. Getting out of that comfort zone of, well, I only talk to these seven people because I've known them my entire life, right? Meeting new people is one of the hardest things to do. I'm so shy, dude. So shy. I kid you not. Even you know now, what? When, I want to ask you this real quick. Yeah. When is the last time you made a new friend? Because you're 35 now, right? Yeah. Like When's a true, true friend or like a good relationship? Like you met an actual new friend. Uh, this weekend at Tony's Ride Along. Uh, Omid, really cool dude. I sat next to him on the bus and we talked for like an hour and a half and we exchanged numbers and now I consider him a good relationship. I'm okay. going to be talking to him quite often. But Besides prior to that, that guy, when's the okay. last time you met somebody? Like prior to actual... that dude? You met some random ass person that then became your friend. Probably you, man. No joke. And then <laughs> before, before that, that. Probably you. But before that even. Uh, you're getting too far in the spectrum here. I don't know. Sorry. Dude. Um, I mean, I'm bringing, I'm bringing no, this up because yeah, actually, as we adult, it's hard, dude. Yeah, no, it is. It, so, okay, look, I, I, I think in the last, let, let's just put this into perspective. I'll put this into a quick perspective. In the last two years, I've made more friends than I have in the in the prior ten years to that. Why do you right? think that is? Because every single time, actually, I take that back. So, in the past two years, I've made more friends. Before that, it was two years when I worked at the casino. Before that, it was like ten years. And every time that that happens, it's because I've stepped out of this zone into something new. And then from there, I stepped into this zone into something new. For example, when I was working at the collection agency, I was around the same people every single day. 
there was no reason for me to do anything else. And then once I left that job and I went to the casino, I was working in the casino and I met all these new people in a new environment. Because now it's something completely different than what I was in, right? In a new environment. When I left the casino, I got into short-term rentals. I met so many new people because I'm in a new environment, right? In the last two right. years, when I shut down all my units and I started doing the speaking and the networking and the talking and the podcasts and Clubhouse, I made so many new friends. I think in the last year and a half, I've probably made more friends than I have in my entire life, in the past 35 years of my life. And it all came from new environment, new relationships, getting out of your comfort zone and talking. Every you're time missing. you go into a new environment in your life, that's when you're going to make new friends and new people. I was going to say you're missing one one important thing there. You probably wanted to learn too. Yeah. Well, I, every time I got into a new environment. No, no, no. So you brought up a great point. A great point, Jesse. Every time I got into a new environment is because I was learning something new. I didn't step into the casino. Well, that one wasn't to learn. It was because I needed a job. But I didn't step into entrepreneurship or into, into real estate until I wanted to learn about it. I didn't step yeah. into short-term rentals until I wanted to learn about it. And it opened up this whole new world, right? Right now, I'm yeah. learning how to buy businesses. I'm stepping into a new environment. I'm learning something new. Who knows what relationships that's going to bring? I'm actually excited for that, right? <laughs> new environment. We're going to yeah. this networking meetup. That's a new environment, right? We just started doing actual live networking meetups. This one's yep. going to be huge. There's a hundred and something people coming. Who knows who comes out of that? When right. I went to this ride along this past weekend, I was super shy. I showed up and I'm like the guy in the corner, kind of like. You're the guy talk we're to? talking about right now. Yeah, no, seriously. I was like, who do I talk to? I know what I'm talking about, but sometimes I tend to become a little too smart for my own good. And I hate coming off as that guy. Right. And so mm -hmm. I'm like, I stayed quiet. This is I, I'm here as as a friend, right, to Tony and his wife. And I'm here to talk about short term rentals when asked. And I stepped into the corner and I'm just like, who do I talk to? And some guy goes up to me. He's like, hey, man, you know, I'm so-and-so. And I'm like, hey, pleasure. I'm Raphael. Oh, cool. What do you do? And I'm like, oh, I do short-term rentals. Oh, you already do short-term rentals. And that's when the conversation starts. Right. Right. But I stepped into a new environment and then I met new people within that group. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. You, you have to, man. And, and the, only, the only reason why I bring this up is because a lot of people go to these meetups. It's either their first one or they've been to a couple and they're not really, you know, talking a whole lot. And I've watched it myself. Like you have to get out there, just introduce yourself, like you said earlier. Um, but not only that, in business, the more hands you shake, the more money you're going to make. So if you're in this to learn and to make money and to I love grow, like you have to continue to do those types of things. You got to make sure to shake people's hands, to have conversations, because you never know what's going to happen, man. You never know what person you're going to run into. Yeah. You never know what that conversation is going to lead to. I might talk about Santa Ana and then Rafa's got units in Santa Ana. And guess what? He can't take enough units. And guess what? I'm that guy that said I had potential properties in Santa Ana or I'm going into Santa Ana. Yeah. And then boom, that's it. Relationship. You're in a new market. You're in a yep. new relationship. You're in a new partnership. You're in whatever it is. And literally, it sounds easy. It is that easy. Like it's literally just having a conversation. So, you know, it's it's funny, Jesse, talking about how easy it is. It's actually kind of hard when you meet new people and talk to them. For example, even at network meetups. Let I went to this to, to the networking event on Friday night. And it was at a, at a hotel and there's a bunch of tables and each table had about four chairs and each table has four chairs and they're all occupied by people networking and talking. And then it's the next table and they're all occupied. And you walk in and you that one odd guy walking around, just kind of staring like, do I jump into do this I, conversation? Where do I fit in it? Do I go here? That's hard. <laughs> Even for me, I just yeah. stayed quiet in the corner because like I don't feel comfortable going up and going, hey, I'm Rafa. Let me interrupt right. your conversation. That's hard. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're right. You got to get right. uncomfortable in those situations as well, because it, it is it. I ended up doing it. Ultimately, I was like, hey, guys, can I just jump in this conversation really quick? I'm Rafa. What are you guys talking about? And then just continue the conversation as normal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to be able to feel that you have value to bring to, you know, even if it's something small or simple or even just saying, hey, I'm just here to learn. Like, what do you do? How do I learn from you? You know, what's something you're doing now? What market are you in? But yeah, man, I'm super excited for this for this meetup. And I think it's important. I'm glad we brought it up today and we kind of talked about it. And I know this episode is just kind of a you and I shooting the breeze. Um, yeah. But, you know, we just want to make sure that everybody gets in and just understands what the market is and meetups, go to meetups, go to meetups, even if it's just virtual or it's in person, like you guys got to get to these connect with people. It's highly important to do such things. Yeah. Hey, and Jesse, now I guess since I can see your pupper back there, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Hi. Too. I know she's on the bed. <laughs> I love your little dog. She's always jumping around. So I think Crazy let's talk dog. about um, what, what we're going to do for the podcast for the next couple episodes, right? Because the first, I mean, we're episode 15 now. We kind of transitioned into three months. So the quarter kind of, let's change. Uh, 
I, I, I should we talk about it? I mean, I, we're going to do yeah. what the next five episodes or so um, just for everybody listening to just so you guys kind of get an idea where we're going now is we want to take it back to the roots. The we want to take it back to where we started and it's short term rentals. So the next couple episodes are going to be strictly short term rentals. Us, us ranting, always ranting, guys, about <laughs> what we're going to, to do in our lives here. Right. Um, I'm gonna, one of the episodes, maybe I'll talk about how I went from, you know, the 28 units to 44 units. 16 in yep. three weeks what scaling, scaling looks like yeah what scaling yeah. looks like mm-hmm. how easy it really is to get started in short-term rentals what a professional operator looks like which we kind of touched on today anyway yeah. um and then doing things like like pivoting right pivoting to to, to midterm rentals long-term rentals um right. exit strategies all of that so um if you guys have any numbers. questions or anything yeah well yeah we're gonna disclose some numbers we're gonna run yeah. some some numbers for you guys so you guys get an understanding of what it is in different markets right apartment complexes to three bedroom houses to vacation rental markets what the numbers look like um all of that so you guys are gonna hear us for the next maybe five episodes or so just us to, we're gonna do like a segment like a short-term rental segment and we kind of want to do with this maybe every couple months jesse i don't know yeah i think so so really break, really, really niche down on, on specific things on how to do, you know, how to operate, you know, let's just say how to operate starting with one unit or how to professionalize with the VA, you know, things that you're good at, Rafa, things that I'm good at, we'll just really break those down and what those look like. So it comes simple for you guys listening to learn how to do, um, because at the end of the day, it's, you know, short term rentals are easy to get into, but they're hard to professionalize. And that's what we're here to talk about. Yeah. So, well, with yeah, that, man. I mean. Want to take them out, my friend, because we uh, we're at the top of the hour. We like to keep these within the hour. And I kind of feel like, you know. Yeah. So th- there's a couple things that I want to ask the audience to do if they can for us. The first one is please like and subscribe this if you're watching it on YouTube. And the second one is share this episode or our episodes with people that you love and care about or that you're trying to learn about this market. You know, give us a chance to get in front of more people. Um, And number three would be to um, on Spotify and and on Apple Music, click the five star mark and rate us because that gives us higher in the ranking so more people can listen to us. So we would appreciate you guys all doing that. I'm stoked for even having people listen to us. Um, But yeah, and then come to the meetup this weekend on Saturday over in Santa Ana, which is going to be what's the date? March 13th, March 12th, which is in three days. And with that being said, listen, guys. I got to and ladies and everybody who listens to us and watches us rant on ladies and germs. We appreciate you so much. You have no idea. We do this for you guys. Um, We do this to have fun, but we want to be able to help as many people as possible. And uh, I've had a lot of people over the last couple of months go up to us and go that they tell us that they love the podcast. Some have told us that they hate the podcast. Just fine. You know, (laughs) whether you like it or don't, I hope I hope you guys can take key points to add to your business, right? To your mindset to your frame, to your state of mind, to the way we shift, right? As humans, the way we grow, right? The way we pivot at every point in time. I've learned so much in the last 15 weeks just by having conversations, right? In terms of mindset, the way I look at things, the way I operate. I mean, it's been awesome. So I really hope that you, if I'm learning, I really hope that you guys, the listeners and the viewers are picking up as much as you can. Um, You know, don't just listen to us and put it on the back burner. Take some notes, write some points down, apply what you learn, right? You always only have 24 hours to apply what you learn before it's gone. I really hope you guys enjoy it. It means the world to us. I mean, we're already like at 3,000 views or something. It's only been three months, which is awesome. We never intended it would grow that way, right? Uh, We have a bunch of downloads. And uh, it's just me and Jesse having good conversations with people and hoping to, you know, add value to you guys' lives. So thank you so much. We love you all. With that being said, adios till the next one. Peace out, everybody.